Lamer Miller Whitehead, a controversial pastor from Brooklyn, was recently found guilty on multiple charges, including extortion and fraud. The 45-year-old preacher faced five counts, among them lying to the FBI, attempting extortion, and wire fraud. Prosecutors argued that Whitehead, who had a prior conviction for identity theft, exaggerated his relationship with New York City Mayor Eric Adams to gain credibility. He allegedly deceived and intimidated his victims into handing over their money, boasting about his influential connections to manipulate them further. Whitehead's flashy lifestyle, characterized by his expensive attire and luxurious possessions, starkly contrasts with the criminal activities for which he has been convicted. His ostentatious display of wealth, often flaunted in his church and on social media, was portrayed as a sign of divine blessing and success. However, these claims of prosperity masked a more sinister reality of deceit and exploitation. The legal proceedings revealed that Whitehead manipulated a parishioner into making substantial financial contributions under false pretenses. Additionally, his attempt to extort a business was part of a broader pattern of using intimidation and deceit to enrich himself. Throughout the trial, Whitehead's repeated claims of connections to high-profile individuals, including Mayor Adams, were scrutinized and ultimately debunked. Whitehead's conviction has significant implications for his future and his standing within the community. As he awaits sentencing, the fallout from his actions continues to unfold, affecting his followers and raising questions about the ethical responsibilities of religious leaders. The case serves as a stark reminder of the potential for abuse of power within religious institutions and the importance of accountability. Bishop Lamer Miller Whitehead, a controversial pastor known for his flamboyant displays of wealth, has been found guilty of coercing his parishioners into giving him money. According to prosecutors, Whitehead persuaded Pauline Anderson, a member of his congregation, to invest approximately $90,000 of her retirement savings with him. Instead of using the funds responsibly, Whitehead spent the money on luxury items from Foot Locker and Louis Vuitton, as well as making auto payments. Further allegations include his interactions with Brandon Belmonte, a car body shop owner from the Bronx. Whitehead allegedly attempted to extort a $500,000 loan from Belmonte by leveraging his supposed connections with New York City Mayor Eric Adams. Prosecutors claimed that Whitehead promised access to the mayor in exchange for the substantial loan, thereby exploiting his fabricated relationship with the high-profile politician. Additionally, the indictment revealed that Whitehead lied to FBI investigators about his possessions, specifically claiming to own only one phone when he actually had two. This false statement adds to the gravity of his criminal activities. Each of the charges against Whitehead carries a maximum penalty of 20 years in prison, except for the count related to false statements, which has a maximum term of five years. Whitehead's fraudulent actions have significantly tarnished his reputation and raised serious concerns about the ethical responsibilities of religious leaders. His case underscores the potential for abuse of power within religious institutions and highlights the importance of accountability. As Whitehead awaits sentencing, the impact of his crimes continues to resonate with his followers and the broader community, prompting a deeper examination of trust and integrity within religious leadership. In March 2024, a jury found Bishop Lamer Miller Whitehead guilty on all counts, including lying to the FBI, attempted extortion, and wire fraud. His sentencing is scheduled for July 1st, and he faces the possibility of spending decades in prison. About Lamer Whitehead born in 1978, Lamer Whitehead claims to be the son of Arthur Miller Jr., who died in police custody following a traffic stop. However, the Miller family's website states that Arthur Miller Jr. had only one son, who was 12 years old at the time of his father's death. Whitehead's Legal Troubles Bishop Whitehead's legal issues stem from multiple fraudulent schemes. One prominent case involved him convincing a parishioner, Pauline Anderson, to invest approximately $90,000 of her retirement funds with him. Instead of using the money as intended, Whitehead spent it on luxury items and auto payments. This case exemplifies the misuse of trust and funds that led to his conviction. Additional allegations and impact prosecutors also highlighted Whitehead's attempt to extort a $500,000 loan from Bronx-based car body shop owner Brandon Belmonte by falsely Whitehead promising FBI access to investigators Mayor Eric about the Adams. number of phones he owned, further complicating his legal situation. Each charge against him carries significant penalties, including up to 20 years in prison for most counts and up to five years for the false statements count.
Broader implications, Whitehead's actions and subsequent conviction have cast a shadow over his religious leadership, raising serious questions about accountability and integrity within religious institutions. His case serves as a cautionary tale about the potential for abuse of power and the importance of ethical conduct among those in positions of influence. As Whitehead awaits his sentencing, the community continues to grapple with the implications of his actions and the lessons to be learned from his downfall. Bishop Lamar Whitehead, an enigmatic figure, completed his education at New York Theological Seminary. He holds a degree in Ministry and Human Services from the Nyack College accredited Theological Institution of Rising Hope, Inc. Additionally, he is a licensed chaplain in New York State and a professional marriage and funeral officiant. Early life and education Whitehead was born in 1978, claiming to be the son of Arthur Miller Jr., who allegedly died in police custody after a traffic stop. This claim, however, contrasts with the account on his surviving family's website, which states that Arthur Miller Jr. had only one son, aged 12, at the time of his father's death. Criminal History and Redemption Whitehead's past is marked by significant legal troubles. In 2008, he was convicted for orchestrating a large-scale fraud operation, resulting in a prison sentence at Sing Sing. This conviction stemmed from his involvement in identity theft and other fraudulent activities, highlighting a history of deception and manipulation. Post-Prison Life and Ministry Following his release from prison, Whitehead sought to reinvent himself. He emerged as a charismatic and acclaimed leader, founding the Leaders of Tomorrow International Ministries. His transformation from a convicted felon to a religious leader was swift, and he garnered a significant following, particularly in Brooklyn, where he is based. His ministry focuses on empowering and uplifting the community, though his lavish lifestyle often drew scrutiny. Recent Legal Troubles Whitehead's legal issues resurfaced with accusations of extortion and fraud. Prosecutors revealed that he had deceived parishioner Pauline Anderson, convincing her to invest approximately $90,000 of her retirement funds with him. Instead of using the money for its intended purpose, Whitehead spent it on luxury items and personal expenses. Further allegations involved his dealings with Bronx-based car body shop owner Brandon Belmonte. Whitehead was accused of attempting to coerce Belmonte into providing a $500,000 loan by promising access to Mayor Eric Adams, a relationship he exaggerated for personal gain. Additionally, Whitehead was found guilty of lying to FBI investigators about the number of phones he owned, complicating his legal situation, conviction, and sentencing. In March 2024, a jury found Whitehead guilty on all counts, including lying to the FBI, attempted extortion, and wire fraud. His sentencing, scheduled for July 1st, could result in decades behind bars. Each charge carries significant penalties, including up to 20 years in prison for most counts and up to five years for the false statements count, broader impact and community response. Whitehead's conviction has significant implications for his community and followers. His actions and subsequent downfall serve as a stark reminder of the potential for abuse of power within religious institutions. As Whitehead awaits sentencing, the community continues to grapple with the consequences of his actions and the broader lessons on integrity and ethical conduct. His story is a complex tapestry of redemption and relapse, highlighting the intricate interplay between charisma, leadership, and morality. Whitehead's conviction has profound implications for his community and followers. His actions and subsequent downfall serve as a cautionary tale about the potential for abuse of power within religious institutions. As Whitehead awaits sentencing, the community continues to grapple with the fallout from his actions and the broader lessons on integrity and ethical conduct. His story, a complex blend of redemption and relapse, underscores the intricate interplay between charisma, leadership, and morality.